Hi, my name's Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Welcome to Snowballs on Cobblestones. Okay, you might remember this. This is the 10 yen coin that was exposed to Amaza gas and uh, there was a flash and it blew through this hole. And this is before it touched the PTFE. In fact, this side of the coin never touched the PTFE. Uh, but if we scroll up here, the area which I was going to be uh, sort of most interested in, uh, in my opinion, was this this little area here, which seems to be out of the main affected area, and there seem to be some interesting structures. Now, I'm going to draw your attention to one of them, which is here, uh, and you can't really see it, so um, I'm going to go in and look a lot closer, uh, and uh, you can see over here... Uh, now, we'll talk about this in another uh, video, uh, but what I want you to look at is this structure here. Now, it's very much brighter than the rest of it, so it was likely to be something shiny, like copper. Um, and the question was, what was all this around here, and what is going on in here, and why is this looking like this? Anyway, so, courtesy of Magic Sound Lab, uh, we put it on the SEM, for which he uh, sacrificed uh, uh, personal satisfaction of a... Uh, a Tesla or something by uh, investing heavily in, in uh, this item and taking a bet on a second-hand item. So thank you very much for Alan Goldwater at Magic Sound Lab and uh, for those people that helped uh, uh, me come here uh, to uh, look at these samples. Uh, what I've realized is that I have so many samples over the last uh, three years that I probably need a month here. So I'm going to have to come back. So Maybe I'll need to ask uh, uh, someone to, to help me with that. But anyway, um, what we're seeing here is actually this uh, coppery type uh, uh, section. Woo! <laughs> uh, sometimes. And it is over here, this, this bit down here. And uh, uh, that is what we're looking at here. And uh, it's quite pretty. And uh, first up, uh, I did a little uh, element map. Uh, here, and you can see that uh, essentially most of it uh, is the copper. And interestingly enough, uh, whilst zinc, uh, if you look at the proportions uh, for the 10 yen coin here, and this is off uh, Wikipedia, uh, you can see the Japanese 10 yen coin is 95% copper, 3 to 4% zinc, and 1 to 2% tin. The interesting thing is that this kind of uh, sort of crust here is almost entirely zinc and this is uh, copper so it looks like the, a lot of the copper has kind of disappeared uh, where that's gone to uh, one can only guess uh, but what we're looking at here is uh, the element map and so if I get that in focus for you uh, we have uh, copper um, is uh, the uh, ready pinky look here the zinc is all of this crust that I'm talking about and there's a couple of spots of tin here. So uh, it does have the ability to highly concentrate uh, what's going on, uh, the, the elements from the uh, coin. But when I was looking at this SEM, I thought, hello, there's something going on there. Uh, like I kind of see these fuzzy areas here. And I kind of looked a bit closer and I'm thinking, they look like kind of like tracks in snow or... or they actually look like the Lion Diamond Miners, you know, but with a bit more freedom to go where they like. It's almost like you saw with the uh, Mi 356, with these things kind of spreading out from the metal. And it, knowing that Bogdanovich et al. Uh, at the Moscow Physics Laboratory, they had observed uh, what they call condensed plasmoids, or uh, we might like to call EVOs, uh, acting for over two days after they uh, turned off their uh, discharge device, very much similar to Suhas Ralkar's foil maker. Um, I wanted to have a closer look at these to see what was going on. Uh, the reason being is that, you know, th this fuzziness is likely to be some sort of copper oxide because we know it's mostly copper. Um, but it seems to be digging trails and they're a slightly different colour, which under EDS terms uh, suggests that it might be a, a different element. So I got quite excited, uh, not very excited, but quite excited. And uh, here's a, a better look at that. And, uh, well, this is, seems to be a bit of an outlier. It's just like a fleck there. It's not got its trail. But the rest of them are moving around in trails. So like you've got one here that's kind of like gone round and gone round in a circle. And this one's come up here and joined here. And this sort of come 
two have come together and they've gone over here and joined up together. Um, like like usual, the uh, images uh, and links for this will be in the description for the video, so you'll be able to analyze this in your own time. But here you can see um, it started off small and then it's sort of wiggled along and it's got bigger and it's literally like someone rolling a snowball and it's getting bigger. There's one come round here or up there. I don't know. It's difficult to tell which direction. There's two that have started. Um, and another one that's sort of come round here, maybe. Um, absolutely fascinating. But what are these? What is this? What is this? Let's find out. And so we did. And here we go. This is uh, a couple of spots. So what I've done is I've got 107 and uh, uh uh, 99 here on the actual surface of what I call the cobblestones. This is one cobblestone. Uh, and then I've gone around and I've looked at what the fleck here, which seems to be its own isolated thing. It's not like all the others with the, with the kind of rolling in the snow type track. And then the other ones, I've got four of them spotted out just to see what they were. What are they? Okay, so I've named them here. So uh, the... The surface uh, and the surface, these are 99 and 107. And uh, you can see that uh, they have uh, almost exactly the same, 49.3, uh, 46, uh, 3, you know, 36, 37, 11, 12, pretty much the same con constituents um, uh, of these cobblestones. Um, the fleck uh, is a, an outlier. Uh, it has some tin. I mean, there's a little tin in there, but uh, it's uh, much lower on the um, copper. It's like half the copper by atomic percent uh, and very, very much more uh, zinc. Uh, you know, it's about, uh, what, what should we say, uh, four or five times more than the 99 and 107 uh, samples. But look at the, what I'm calling the miners after uh, diming my, di di oh. <laughs> uh, mining diamonds with lion. Um, each of them contain sulfur. Now, sulfur is twice as heavy as oxygen. So, and we'll come to that. Uh, so this being atomic concentration, you can imagine if this was um, uh, mass concentration, this would constitute... Uh, a lot more than say 2.76 percent it might be uh, five six seven percent of the mass and it's a complete outlier with the other ones so the actual things that are uh, rolling around in the snow accumulating accumulating bulk and changing color um, are actually composed differently elementally well what is this what this is telling you something Oxygen 16 to sulfur 32 is the classic George Oshawa, or one of the classic George Oshawa reactions. And this is the one that you see in bull lightning giving that um, acrid smell, apparently, uh, when a bull lightning explodes. And the, the concept is there. Uh, you might have seen in my presentation uh, uh, at uh, uh, Stanford uh, a number of years ago. I'm saying that, that uh, you know, it's the oxygen, two oxygens fused to sulfur. And if you go to the Parkamov reaction tables, and uh, we see them here. Uh, let's get that into view. And dial it back a bit. So uh, on the Parkamov reaction tables, if we start with oxygen isotopes, uh, two of those and fuse them, they all go to isotopes of stable sulfur. The one at the bottom there, though, is the most likely because uh, almost all of oxygen is oxygen 16, and that is going to sulfur 32. Uh, and everything's a boson, which is good. That makes it quite likely, in my view. And so that is what appears to be going on. What is the implication of what you are just witnessing? Well, the implication is in my view, that a Marza gas is Lena in a bottle. I'll repeat that. It would appear that a Marza gas is Lena in a bottle. Now, I'm saying this not just because I've seen this. It's because there's a whole bunch of stuff. And this takes work to go from looking at stuff to what I'm giving you here. And this isn't the only uh, sample that has done something like this. Um, uh, I showed you the whiskers on the titanium with the apparent transmutations with alpha se separations. Um, uh, this is uh, more classical George Oshawa 
uh, uh, Lena reactions, and it would appear that indeed uh, the Amasa gas is a Lena in a bottle. And if that is the case, then if you feed it something radioactive, then in theory it should do something like make it stable, which is what uh, Lena tends to do. Um, the interesting thing about this is this is extremely repeatable. You can get the Amasa gas, do it, and then have a look. Do it, have a look. Do it, have a look. This isn't the only one of these structures that were on here. There were several around here. So, you know, you can you can almost repeat this all day long if you had access to Amasa gas. The interesting thing is, does this do the same thing with HHO? Who can say? I'm hoping to speak to Slobodan uh, uh, at the uh, ICCF 22 in uh, Assisi in Rome in a few weeks. And uh, he said that he will conduct some tests at, um, uh, as per recommendation. This looks like it could be a good candidate. And uh, I, I would like to see uh, uh, Mr. Amaza uh, try and repeat, repeat some of these tests which are going to come out of the other analysis that we've done. But uh, what from what we are looking at here, it would appear that Amaza gas and a 10 yen coin demonstrates fusion of oxygen to sulfur. Now, Alan had a, a really good idea. Uh, should we put this under the SEM uh, uh, over a number of days? and see if using the electron beam we can stimulate these things into action and, and take a couple of pictures over a period of days and see if these things can are still actively eating away at the oxides on this copper. Of course you have a, 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 a air, you have an oxide layer and you have a, a metal which is a really good conductor, it's copper, uh, it's, it's about as good as it gets, and um, uh, apart from silver, and and so you have a uh, impedance uh, uh, interface here, and this is exactly what uh, shoulders said uh, they uh, uh, act out at the the um, exotic vacuum objects, and. Uh, I, I will remind you again to go and look at the Bogdanovich work uh, that was published uh, earlier, I think in May this year, where they create oh, what they call uh, condensed plasmoids, and they move around the surface. And uh, um, they are, well, in this case, it would appear that they are transmuting elements. So thank you very, very much for your time. I cannot begin to tell you how uh, amazing it is what I'm, what I'm witnessing uh, under the analysis of these various samples we brought back from Japan. But not only that, from a range of other samples that are being analysed. There is analysis going on in Hungary, uh, which I will report on, uh, hopefully, maybe even today. Um, and that was uh, about uh, the testing of the um, uh, season chloride. And that has very, very interesting outcome as well. Uh, unexpected, but uh, it seemingly follows the same pattern. And uh, there is testing going on also in Australia. Um, and so we shall see if some of that data uh, uh, shows anything interesting. But... I really like these kind of physical things where it is clearly not contamination. There is something that's progressively going on. Um, and you're going to see, I am going to tell you quite a bit more of this kind of evidence. Thank you very much for your time. See you in the next video.